All right, guys. I might have bought a big piece of scrap metal. As you guys know, I bought this truck like two months ago. And in that first video, I kept saying, you know, I've got it for a crazy good deal. Cheapest one on the marketplace, blah, 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 blah. And I think I finally figured out what may have happened and why it was so cheap. If you guys didn't watch that first video, I'll kind of give you guys an update. So this is a 2001 Ram 2500. It has a little bit, what, 315? A little bit over 300,000 miles in the truck. Can't really remember. Um, if you guys didn't watch the first video, we bought it with a major oil leak. So I thought that's why I was getting the truck for so cheap, besides the miles and, and the year of it. But uh, it was probably like four or $5,000 cheaper than any other second gen Cummins in the marketplace. So whenever he posted it, I immediately shot him a text and said, hey man, I'm coming with the cash right now. Is everything good on the truck? And he goes, yes, 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 besides all these problems. I said, all right, sweet, I'm coming your way right now. Get up there, he lives two hours north of me. Get up there, buy the truck, just kind of doing a, a quick short story of what I did. Drove the truck all the way back down here and it was leaking really bad. And uh, so I knew, okay, that's probably why I got it for so cheap. Well, I didn't register the truck or anything with the DMV until after I fixed everything. As you guys seen in the last video on this truck, I fixed everything, drove it around, everything is running great on the truck. The truck runs like a sewing machine, really, really nice. No crazy weird noises, not shifting erratically. The truck runs great. But uh, I didn't register or anything. The only thing I did was I put insurance on it the day I bought the truck that way when I drove two hours back. If I had any issues, I would have insurance on the truck. Um, so I fixed everything, went to the DMV a day or so after posting the last video on the truck. And I uh, said, hey, here's my bill of sale. Here's my title. Don't want to show the guy's information. But I, ha I have all the paperwork watched for the truck. And I said, here you go. And she goes, well, the, the first problem you're going to run into is... Uh, his name's Nicholas, but he put Nick on the bill of sale and it doesn't match the title. In Alabama, I guess it has to match on the bill of sale and the title. Well, he had Nick on the bill of sale, Nicholas on the title. I'm not going to give you his full name, but that's just kind of give you a synopsis of what's going on. So I was getting a hard time over that and I was like, okay, great. Now I'm going to have to find this guy. I haven't talked to him in two months or probably a month at this point. I'm sorry. It was probably five weeks after I, after I talked to him and after I fixed the truck. And I was like, uh, I bought on Marketplace. We don't have the messages or anything like that. So I was like, okay, I'm kind of get screwed but this lady give me a hard time over the guy's first name i mean come on nick and nicholas but anyways she kind of did a quick little forge on there made it work and she goes okay we can get past that i was like all right sweet well then we she runs the vin and she goes oh well we're past the name part but now you can't even drive the truck so at this point i'm like oh my gosh man like what's going on now and she goes the truck is a junk title truck which if you guys i'm from florida i've never heard of a junk title i'm not sure if we had that in florida but i've always heard of salvage rebuilt and obviously clean and what a junk title means is that uh, it was wrecked at one point, and the insurance company bought it from the individual after the wreck, and then obviously it went to like a co-part or a junkyard, and they send the title to that junkyard for the truck, and it gets parted out. So pretty much the whole truck is disassembled and uh, uh, sold in pieces. And uh, so that's what the title is saying, junk. So at this point, I'm like, oh my gosh. So I immediately called my insurance company. I'm like, hey man, what's going on? Like, I, I just bought this truck. You guys never told me it was uh, a junk title. The lady at the DMV said I can't even drive on the road. That's a hazard to everyone else on the road. And he says, hey man, I I'm not seeing anything wrong with the title. So I'm like, okay, sweet. Well, at this point, I never ran a Carfax on the truck. It was a dumb mistake, but I never did. I was just so excited to go grab it. And it was so cheap. I was like, hey, which, I, which is the reason why I should have ran a Carfax. I always do a Carfax. And I uh, ran the Carfax, and sure enough, it was it's like a three-owner truck or something like that, and uh, it has a junk title with the last owner. So the guy I bought it from got put into junk. And the only wrecks I seen was the owner before him had gotten to a small fender bender, which if you guys remember from the first video, it does have an aftermarket uh, trans cooler, which would kind of be in line of what the fender bender said. And uh, so it says junk on the title, so I'm not at this point, I'm freaking out. I'm like, all right, sweet, I bought a truck that I can't even drive on the road. It's been sitting in my yard for over a month at this point. So I messaged the guy, I said, hey man, the owner, the guy I bought it from, I messaged him, I said, hey man, this what's going on. What, how are you able to drive it? And uh, what, what can we do to remedy this situation? I don't want to be screwed out of all this money I just put towards the truck. And not to mention, you guys know, I bought like an air dog, headlights, all this power steering stuff. So I've spent, you know, another thousand dollars on this truck on top of what I paid for the truck. And, uh, he never messaged me back. So I was like, all right, crap, it's going to be one of those scenarios where I'm just kind of screwed with it, which would be my fault because I didn't run the Carfax on it. I didn't do my due diligence on it. I'm not blaming the guy that sold it to me. Um, but he seemed like a great guy in person. Asked him multiple times. The title was clean. Everything was good. He seemed like an honest guy. Well, lo and behold, yesterday, last night, he messaged me back. Now, at this point, it's been a month probably since I originally messaged him. It's probably been about two months since I've had the truck. And he said, hey, man, I just saw your messages. What's going on with it? And I gave him the quick story of the DMV, saying that it's just junk tile, they won't let me drive it. 
And so he goes to DMV this morning, and uh, turns out when he bought the truck, something, uh, when he bought the truck and got it registered, everything was clean, and then something happened at DMV where it, it shows like immediately after where that got put as a junk title. So it was never in a wreck by the time that he registered it and where the junk title got put in. And with the lady at the DMV is saying that it was apparently a misstep, which I don't, that's a pretty big misstep, honestly, if you guys are at DMV or not paying attention. But I mean, it's kind of screwing me now because he asked the lady, like, hey, you know, I've already sold the truck. This guy's having an issue down south. You know, what can he do to remedy it? And I guess what they're saying is I can drive the truck back up to them and they can go over the truck, you know, make sure the frame's straight, make sure the odor, motor and everything is good. And they would then just, they wouldn't be able to give me a clean title, but it would be a salvage title. So I'd kind of be back in the same situation, but I'd at least be able to drive it or it's a rebuild. I might have those mistaken, but um, I'd at least be able to drive it on the road. So, I mean, I have that going for me. The, the guy that sold it to me also has another second gen that he's willing to give to me. It wouldn't be a full second gen. It would literally just be the cab. So I wouldn't have the rear doors, front end, obviously nothing. It would literally just be the, the front two doors in the cab. And uh, that way I'd at least put that, he would give me that cab and that title that's clean. That way I could put it on this truck and still, still be able to drive it. So that's an option. Or he's willing to give me a little bit of money back, which I'm probably leaning towards that. That way I can kind of put it back into the truck. So there might be another option why I would want the money back. And that's because as you guys know, I have two trucks. I love this one to death. It runs and drives great. But if I can't drive this one, and if he gives me a little bit of money back where I can make it make sense, I might just take the cab and the bed off of this one and put it onto that one. Because like I said, he, he has a white one I would get a clean title off of. Well, I already have the title and everything in my name on this one. So we'd literally just do a cab swap. So we'd take the bed off of this one, off of the green one, and swap the cabs. We just did it with two of Jonathan's trucks. So we just did it a few months ago. So we're still kind of warm on doing the whole process but uh that's another possibility so either it, a i could sell the truck as it is with the title not in my name and just sell it as like a parts truck or something that wants a mud truck drag truck farm truck and uh it's still worth a little bit of money because it's still running driving cummins or uh b get the cab from him do the cab swap that way but if i'm gonna do the cab swap anyways that's why i'm kind of leaning on just doing it on my the truck I already have in my possession and to get a little bit of money back from him or uh, C, which I can't remember what C was at this point. But anyways, there was like three options. I can't remember what it was. Drive up there and get it inspected. Oh, drive up there and get it inspected. That's right. So I either drive the truck back up to Opelika. But the problem with that one is the lady says it's only like a 50-50% chance. I guess they're very, very particular on rebuilding titles. And even though it was their mistake, I guess it's the mechanic shop that would be doing it isn't in connection with the DMV, if that makes sense. So it's like up to their standards. And even though the DMV made a mistake, they can't make the mechanics give it a rebuilt title or something. It was something like that. I don't really know. I'm all learning this like as, as we're going. So uh, that's another option, but I have to drive it up there and then risk maybe them doing it or maybe them not doing it. And it's kind of be a waste of time. And I don't see why they wouldn't. Dude, I mean, what? just look up what the inspection, like if they're gonna have to honk the horn, make sure the horn works. I mean the frame. Oh, is, you're saying is, like the frame like, is all straight. You just like make the sure what. Like point inspection. Make yeah, sure see what good. they're gonna inspect on it, and then just go through that. And if it, you think it all checks out, you probably have a good chance of getting it as a rebuilt title. Well, I'm sure those bald mug wrappers probably wouldn't pass inspection, so we probably put new <laughs> new tires on that I have. That's another thing. I did buy tires for this truck too. If you guys and for everyone know. watching, Alabama doesn't have like smog inspections yeah. or anything like that. So this is like. This is literally just based on people's words. Like, there's not like yeah. a fine, fine history on this, but I will say everything the guy has told me, it does match up with the Carfax. He, he was driving this truck, registering it, renewing the tag, and you can see all that on the Carfax. So it was literally in possession of him after he already registered the truck, which if it was a junk title, when he bought the truck from the previous owner, you gotta think, they would have, he would be in the situation that I'm in now. They would have never let him drive the truck, but it got done after he had already gave the DMV the paperwork and everything like that. And somewhere along the lines, the DMV screwed up the paperwork on this truck, and now I'm pretty much stuck with it. Which they I, said after 90 days, they can't do nothing about it, but how are you supposed to know that they made oh, a mistake yeah. if yeah. you're still registering it and you have a clean, they send you a clean title. Mm -hmm. because you don't get that title the same day. You get it like, a month after right. you register it. Which, so. like I said, I'm not trying to show the guys information or whatnot, but there was nothing on this title that says anything that's out of the ordinary. But I did forget to mention, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, so he registered the truck. I'm about to show the guys information. But he obviously bought the truck like three years ago. And so when he registered it, he never knew anything about the title, obviously, until I just bought the truck. So he thought three years ago it, it was a clean title truck. They're obviously not checking the title every time he renews it. So uh, he thought it was good until I, he just gave me the title, which I have in my hand. It has nothing on here. It's a clean title truck. Vins and everything match. I'll show you guys, but the dang windshield's so dark. We just walked over there. You can't even see the VIN from the uh, 
windshield, but everything does match. You guys have to take my word on it. So everything is good on that aspect, but uh, yeah, there's just a couple of different options that we can go about. You guys let me know what you would do if you were in my situation. I'm trying to give the guy the benefit of the doubt. I do honestly believe he's telling the truth. I don't, I met the guy at the guy's house. I mean, you can't, if you're scamming someone, would you have them come to your house? No. Nah. Yeah, I mean, I met the guy, I have all of his, besides obviously I have his address, his name, everything, driver's license, everything like that. So if you're gonna scam someone, you wouldn't give them all of your information and obviously meet them at your house too. So I do think the guy's telling the truth, and like I said, he is trying to remedy the situation with either giving me another cab for the truck, a clean title cab, or just giving me a little bit of money to help out if I do decide to cab swap these trucks. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. It's kind of a crappy situation, but I want to give you guys an update on the truck, so you guys are kind of in limbo. But that's The truck's been sitting here for two months, so I can kind of figure out what we're going to do with it. But yeah, as always, appreciate you guys watching, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks.